In this part of the Instron video series, we're going to go over the use of the Instron temperature chamber that is used when needed when testing at elevated temperatures. I'm going to start off by removing whatever grips or compression platens are currently on the machine because we need to install the pull rod. So I'll go ahead and start taking off the wedge grips. I can leave the load cell on. With the grips removed, the machine on, and the Blue Hill software loaded, I can now raise the cross member up above the temperature or the temperature chamber that's behind. I need to have that high enough such that it clears when I roll the, the oven forward. With the cross member up high enough, I can now install the pull rods. We've got two of them and we store them pinned together. So you can take the pin out and then we can pull these apart. This will come up from the bottom and this will come down from the top off the load cell. Each one of them has a check nut. Again, that check nut is used to lock against either the load cell or the bottom mount, just like on the wedge grips. It's a slightly different tool uh, configuration. We can actually just do this by hand and get it tight enough and that works just fine. So I'll go ahead and install these now. With the top check nut tightened into place against the load cell, that one's all ready to go. I've done the same with the bottom check nut, tightened against the bottom mount. This is now set and ready to go. Notice that up at the top and here, we've got a type DM connection, so we could put in our wedge grips. In this particular example, though, we're going to put in the compression platens because we're going to do compression in this particular lab. Same thing on top. We can put in our type DM compression plate and fitting up there as well. We're looking at the top of the oven and I want to show you how to remove the insulating wedges that allow you to slide the oven forward while the pool rods are in place. I'll open up the door and I'll note that at the top we can pull the wedge out carefully. Now you can't see the bottom of the oven, but there's the exact same wedge at the bottom. I'll pull that out and you can see that they're identical. Again, these get pulled out so that we can slide the oven forward and have clearance for the pull rods that are in place. These insulating wedges are made of a refractory material that we want to be very careful with as it is somewhat fragile. As I move the oven forward, I want to make sure that I'm checking clearances all the time, not to hit anything up in this area or down below. We also want to watch all the cables to make sure they're out of the way. With the oven in place, <clears throat> I can take these bolts and this will keep the oven from sliding around. That's just one of them. There's one on the other side. You would want to put that one in as well. I can now take my compression platens and place them in to the push rods, or pull rods rather. And I'll do the same on top. With both compression platens in place, I can now place the wedge grips back in. I notice up at the top though I have a slight clearance issue so I'm going to bring the cross member down to make sure that everything's cleared out in order to get the, the wedges back in. I've got enough clearance now up at the top so I'll put the wedges in. Make sure that the stainless steel side is towards the oven or inside the oven. Stain the steel side again inside. In order to test the samples that we do for the compression lab, the wood and the PVC, we've got a slight issue in that, for example, with the wood, I've got a space in here that is greater than the amount of clearance up at the top of the system. So if I were to bring this head or try to bring this down, we would crash into the load cell and the pin, which may be difficult to see but the pin may crash down into the top of the oven before we get to it. it. It would. So we're going to have to place spacers in there. Now those spacers can just be pieces of metal to get it up to the right height. 
You also have to do the same thing for the PVC. You'll need a much bigger spacer in order to get that up high enough. It needs to be pretty close. Now even when that is up pretty close and just barely touching such that we can start the test to compress, we need to be very careful that up here on the top nothing hits the top of the oven. And again, the first thing that's going to hit is that pin that, again, might not be visible right now, but that pin is going to hit as it comes down. So you've really got to watch that and make sure your clearances are enough. If we had everything all set up, of course, we can shut the door now. And the operation of the oven is, is fairly straightforward. The controls are on the back, uh, or on the, this right side on the back. And uh, setting the temperature is fairly easy. There's a fan inside to distribute the, the heated air evenly. And operation of the Blue Hill software, of course, is exactly the same. And you can run the, the profile for doing compression tests.